Hi everyone, before I start today's video, now there is a possibility that you can talk with me directly. You just have to simply go on www.nikshala.com, book an appointment and I will get in touch with you directly. Now sending an email and back and forth can be done of course, but again my team members handle all of that. If you want to talk with me directly, please book an appointment on nikshala.com. Let's start today's Alright guys, welcome back once again. So I'm sitting here with Deepak. He comes from the field of embedded and he's here to share his experience of how he got job directly from a yeah. Very interesting story, a guy with a lot of insight. Uh, so behind the camera, we were just discussing what is really happening in this field here in Germany specifically. But yeah, just sit back and uh, let's start with the story. Deepak, why don't you go ahead and with, uh, with your introduction. Hi everybody, my name is Deepak and I come from Delhi in India. In Germany, I work as an embedded hardware engineer. Right. So which is like, you know, it's a, it's a field that is a part of the electronics industry. My job actually involves designing electronic products. See, for example, you have a microwave oven and it, it would have a screen and buttons and there are a lot of electronics inside. And now you can also have microwave which you can you know control with your phone so what i'm really doing is in my company we are connecting all different kind of devices with the internet and this is a field now which is emerging you know very rapidly and it's called internet of things right i am responsible for designing the electronics portion of the uh, gadgets the things i might be doing is designing circuits designing printed circuit boards getting them assembled sometimes negotiating with you know the prices with the manufacturer so i am responsible for taking the idea and converting into a you know hardware which gets integrated inside the whole product got it got it what education have you done yeah i did my bachelor's in electronics and communication okay and that is a broad field but I trained myself mm -hmm. to design electronic products okay and I've been doing it for since I was a student uh, what was your working uh, work experience total five years five years yes nice. what okay. tools do you use to make these designs? okay in my company we have like proprietary tools and open source tools okay I use a particular software called KiCad okay. or KiCad it's an open source tool for designing PCBs, okay. but we also use it quite a lot at our office because it's like it's free and it's it's quite usable actually. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of you know firmware developers and software guys. So if we need to do something, we can write some scripts and hack it. So it's quite hackable, which okay. is something you know people really like when they are engineers mm -hmm. because they, they they love to take control of their tools, right? right? right. But some of the things we have is like we have some oscilloscope which costs you you know like more than 50k. Okay. And those are for understanding okay if there is some kind of emission or if we, the microcontroller is working properly or not. But we also lose use a lot of generic jelly bean mm -hmm. things you know some of the stuff you would buy from AliExpress or uh, you know Amazon you know just like the basic stuff like Raspberry and Arduino which we can use for automating testing and other things but professionally we do not use these tools mm -hmm. inside any of our product because okay. they are not really meant to be used in a you know very cost effective manner we have like if i'm creating a small ring i might do the prototype with Arduino or some colleague might help me but we will only choose the right part right, right kind of semiconductor right kind of manufacturing right kind of pcb substrate when we are designing the products so deepak let's Talk about the real juice of the video. What really happened with you in the interview room? How did you clear this round and what kind of challenges were thrown on your way? My interview basically had three stages. Okay, three okay. rounds. Yeah. The first was like the traditional HR where they try to understand you as a person. They ask, they try to understand everything from your side. Who you are, where you are coming from, you know, how mature you are and what kind of person you are like do you have hobbies are you social can you speak something okay and they also you know if, if it's a technical role they also want to understand if you're a technical person or mm -hmm. not so after that my interview with was directly with my boss you know okay. my not the head of the company but he's like the manager we have okay. the department head okay and i think that is a very good thing because then you directly meet the person who's going to direct you for everything so you understand who you are going to work with so i was very lucky because i really liked the guy he was very humorous mm -hmm. but very nerdy okay and he had like this big glasses and you know large ears and this i had large ears yeah. and <laughs> i don't wear glasses anymore but i have like large ears and then we were talking the same shit so i you know the, it was not like that he was electing me but it was also like me selecting him as my manager right okay right. which is a very important thing right right after the basic technical interview which is the second stage they gave me some assignment okay and i said you know they told me they gave me some hint what exactly the kind of assignment you have okay, okay. and it's a, it's a secret assignment you cannot share it with anybody they, they send you an email okay and it's a very nerdy company you know they are very technical people okay all of them and but they try to enjoy it having the interview process 
and they, they try to understand how you think as an engineer so they gave me like two challenges but which were not hypothetical challenges at all okay which were like two different kind of products they designed at the company okay and they wanted to understand two things if i have never done this thing how i would approach you know to solve this problem one and second what kind of uh, you know what kind of finish my answer would have so that shows how experienced i am already mm -hmm. even if i'm i have not designed the same product i might have designed other products so that shows if i can give them really you know precise answers makes sense they gave me like these two technical questions and i knew one i knew precisely what it was because i designed something similar like okay this is the product it will require this much space they have suggested to use a usb c connector and i thought why do we really need a usb c connector there i researched why do we need a usb i read you know this whole like 300 400 page document not all of it but like i only had like 8 hours to solve both the problems okay. so i went through briefly through all the documentation and through some application notes from dg key and texas instrument then i understood okay the usb c is needed because we want to have a connector which is which will be useful in future very very common answer but also because the power budget of our device was more and normal mm -hmm. usb adapter would not be able to provide that right and there is one more thing which not many people know is with usb c you can also debug the whole board you can use the same data lines for also debugging or you know flashing the firmware blah 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 i knew what how they approach the problem so yes. i described that okay this is how you solve this problem and this is what i would also do as an engineer mm -hmm. the second problem i didn't knew much about it so i called two of my friends okay who are also in the hardware industry and which is allowed because this is how you normally work okay okay this is not some textbook you know yeah, yeah. people collaborate and they solve problems in a collaborative manner so i asked them and one of the guy is really you know he's like you know he's some 45 year old guy and he give me answer but they were not very logically fit mm -hmm. they were like okay do like that do like it was like something plus something and something but you don't know why the you know something like why the output is the sum of the input mm -hmm. you don't know that. the other friend was more logical but he didn't had a precise answer to my question mm -hmm. so my my you know way of choosing was okay the first one the, the suggestion from first friend i rejected and for the second friend i just under, try to understand the basics of it mm -hmm. then i talked to two different pcb manufacturing companies okay. how you manufacture it can you and they had vague answers okay. then finally i again went through some application notes and some design decision making drew a block diagram and then i understood okay what we really need is this kind of pcb mm -hmm. it was like a you know, pcb for rf and and it was for application processor which was like which needed controlled impedance and all all the you know basic stuff which is needed in application processors and ddr rams so then i told them okay this is how i would approach a problem there is a company in china and they provide you this kind of laminate and they they already provide you the values this is not a very high frequency this is not like 6 gigahertz so we can go with a you know generic fr4 stack Uh, of you know four to six PCBs depending upon what kind of density we have, mm -hmm. and we can use very cheap kind of d wires. Wires are like you connect different layers electrically. We don't need special wires because we wanted to reduce the cost. So okay. I told them we will not expensive. We will not use expensive wires because they are a separate process and it could make the whole PCB expensive. And we can just go with this stack up because this is the like the industry standard stack up and we save money on that. And I did some calculations. some maths and it was they liked it okay yeah okay so it was no it was not easy it was not a you know piece of cake for me right, right. but at the same time it was no also not something which i was not familiar with okay so it was a balanced you know challenge so first round it was richer yes second round they had a mild technical round yes but yes. they also then gave you a challenge a yes. problem to solve yes, and yes. come back yes how long did it take you to come back to them so i have, i was given like 8 hours 8 hours to yeah, come back the, yeah, okay with the solution and proper diagrams and with the documentation and everything okay. it, it was not like you have to say something right, right. there was a whole solution i had to type i had to search I, it was like i was busy for the whole day mm -hmm. doing it right. and then i emailed it to them and then they again mm -hmm. like all the people from the department okay like five six people they just the hardware guys not the software guys they they were there and everyone had some question and i had to give them logical answers so it was like i was not dealing with just one person yeah, it yeah. was the whole department was it third round or second round still uh, this was the third round i'm talking so third round now yeah, okay yeah. with all the in the second round they are just asking you basic technical questions right right, right. because they don't want to waste their time you know right. if they don't like you 
So the third round was about why did you do this certain way? Why? Yes. Everything was why. It was always like why like this? Yeah. Because yeah. they want to understand your decision. logic behind it. Yes. Yes. Uh, what was really challenging for me was because I had, I had never built a control impedance PCB at that time. Okay. I was building a lot of PCBs, but you know RF and control impedance was still not my thing. So I had to study a bit. And again, the problem is. Uh, even after going through all this, you know, heap of knowledge, I was not sure even if I'm saying the wrong thing or so. Then uh, I had to take my own call and I had okay. to use my common sense. And after that, I went with my own approach. Okay, this is what I will do, and this is how I will go. And that was actually the correct technical approach. Okay. And it was hard for me. Right, right. So all of this happened in third round with you. Yes. yes. Okay. That went on for how long? It went for I think some two to three hours. Wow. Yeah. God man, okay. Yeah, yeah. So they were basically going over the work what you did in second round, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, Deepak, thank you so much for answering that. Um, probably the last question of the video. What advice do you have for all those people who come from your industry? If you are in the embedded industry, make sure that you are not only working in the office. Okay. This is a very generic advice. It's like go outside try to understand your industry try to understand which fields are emerging mm -hmm. and try to network with people right. if you are looking for opportunity it will always be some person you know who will give you the access to information mm -hmm. because one of the most important thing is access to information mm -hmm. your boss is your boss because he has more access to information than you have there is always an information asymmetry yeah, yeah. and if you want to grow in life then you need factual information mm -hmm. which always comes from multiple sources Got it. and you have to make your own decision. So, so in embedded industry, save a portion of your salary and make your own lab at home. That is what I would advise because you should always be upskilling yourself. Right, the company right. will not, uh, the company has its own motives. They will spend money on something which might be good for your career or which might not help you in your career. Mm -hmm. But if you see that there is some training for soft skills or there is some training for something new, spend money on that. Go the on. money you spend now will be Return you will get a, you know multiple folds right. multiple folds yeah i hope that uh, this information and the video what we filmed helped you a bit of it at least take all the advices put them into your way everything what was discussed today that was his individual journey then yours can be totally different thank you so much for joining us uh, once again and uh, yeah we'll see you guys next time bye bye